actually uh, Cavalier poets, metaphysical poets, and sons of Venice, uh, and uh, all encapsulated in two hours might be too much, might be uh, overwhelming. I do not know. So I'll try to keep it uh, very short. Uh, for metaphysical poetry, it was not really possible to keep it very short. If I would have kept it very short, then I would never have been able to show you the different kind of you know, what what is the 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 flavor of uh, metaphysical poetry, the salient features, unless and until I show it with examples, which absolutely beats the purposes, no the other way. Uh, for Cavalier poet, I've only chosen to Althea uh, from prison. Um, so I hope uh, it will be not too much. So let us uh, look at the little bit of the background of the Cavalier poets before we look into to Althea from prison. So the Cavalier poets worked during the reign of King Charles the First, which is 1600-1649. This was a tumultuous period in English history. This is uh, something we have already discussed in the historical context, when the nation was sharply polarized between the supporters of the king, who were the Cavaliers, and the king's parliament, that of the king's parliament, the roundheads. Okay, they supported the parliament, they were called the roundheads. The description of the term, the term cavalier shares etymological root with chivalry or cavalry, that is chival, French word for horse. So originally it designated a mounted horseman. It signified an elevated social position as commoners were barred to take up commanding positions in the cavalry regiments of the king, right? So that's the description of the term. And let us look at the social context. In context of the English Civil War, the Cavalier poets identified with the interest of the reigning king, Charles I, and strongly believed in the divine right of the kingship. So the Cavalier poets are the ones who supported the monarch. Okay? Cavalier's affiliations to arts and poetics, the term Cavalier poets, is more descriptive of these poets fully affiliations than any stylistic features or topical preoccupation of this poet's writing. They're, they're more politically inclined. The most of the Cavalier poets came from ranks of nobility, must remember this, and had kindred interest with the upkeep of the divine right or absolute monarchy, right? Um, what are the features of Cavalier poets? Cavalier poets concentrated on formal perfection of rhyme, of meter, and cadence. Their inspirations are basically classical Latin poets of, of ancient Rome, like Virgil, Catullus, Lucan, Martian. As the masters, these poets were young aristocrats who prided themselves in their grasp of Latin and mastery of wordcraft and lyric. Right? They were very, very erudite because they, are, they, they knew Latin. Okay, the theme. Theme is steer clear of all issues like religion, philosophy, or political morality, which were common concerns of the 16th century English poetry. And they concentrated on simpler joys of life, like pleasures of conjugal love, country life. Right? Now, okay. Uh, just a second. Yes, the tribe of Ben and Cavalier poets. So sometimes uh, the tribe, uh, the Cavalier poets are also called the tribe of Ben. And there is a confusion between the sons of Ben and tribe of Ben. Uh, we will, uh, I'll try to. So basically, uh, okay, I'll comment on that later on. So uh, you may also say that the Cavalier, the tribe of Ben, uh, the Cavalier poets are basically the tribe of Ben, and some of the practitioners of uh, this type of poetry are Robert Eric, John Suckling, Thomas Carrier, and uh, Robert Lovelace. Having said this, let us look into two Althea from prison. We will read it together, and then we will... Uh, try to explicate the poem as much as possible. So, when love with unconfined wings hovers within my gates and my divine Althea brings to whisper at the graves, when I lie tangled in her hair and fettered to her eye, the gods that wanton in the air know no such liberty. So here, 
it is asserted that love possesses wings and go beyond the physical right love with unconfined wings loveless was actually in prison as he wrote this poem hence the term gets right althea alludes to loveless's lover lucy lucy um and lucy would visit loveless which he was where he was imprisoned and here the use of whisper if you see there's a word called whisper whisper suggest such meetings and these meetings were done in secret so this is a description of the interaction between loveless and lucy and in the next line fettered simply means restrained as an uh, as in he cannot look away from her so birds creatures birds are creatures with physical wings like right? so unlike love who play wanton do not know even they do not know the liberty that loveless feels when he is with his lover right so in the next when flowing cups run swiftly round with no allaying tains our careless heads with roses bound our hearts with loyal flames when thirsty grief in wine we steep when heats and drops go free fishes the tipple in the deep no such liberty so in this line flowing cups refer to the cups of alcohol as in a party right so they must be having a party this line alludes to the thames river in england and how its water is not diminishing allaying the wine at this party this line is just loveless describing a party where careless people can do what they want royal flames here specifically means the supporter of king that is charles the first so more on the uh, party at hand grief due to historical events that also causes loveless's uh, imprisonment is being alleviated by the presence of heats sorry health um and drops the taking of wine health toast and drops the taking of wine so after writing of a party that emphasizes freedom loveless then says that a fish which drinks in the deep of the whole ocean and that has a great deal of freedom does not even know such liberty as that of him supporting the king the fish which knows the deeps the you no know, deepest does not know freedom but the freedom that he feels when he is supporting the king and remember that he is actually imprisoned at this time when like committed linnets i with shriller throat shall sing the sweetness mercy majesty and glories of my king when i shall voice aloud how good he is how great should be in large wings that curl the flood no no such liberty so linnets are a group of songbirds and here are loveless like um, them singing their songs to himself singing the praise of king charles the first this idea is again revealing the freedom loveless possessed despite his imprisonment as he can still praise the king the love and then again loveless goes on to say that enlarged wings do not know this liberty in this instance loveless is suggesting that no wind can make as loud a sound as he when praising his king so imagine the kind of you know the way they supported the king their um idea about the monarchy is so strong is there so much of clarity in his mind the next uh, two lines is the most important line of the poem stone walls do not a prison make nor iron bars a cage minds innocent and quiet take that for an hermitage if i have freedom in my love and in my soul i'm free angels alone that soar above enjoy such liberty so the most is at the most famous lines of the poems and uh, basically it's the entirety of the poem here loveless stops the comparisons he comes right out and says that prison is not a cage hermits enjoy in resigning to cage because it gives them freedom from society the loveless therefore over here applies himself this to himself with the claim that as long as he has freedom not physically but in his soul 
which is referred most likely uh, to the consciousness given the year is 1642 that he is as free as the angels who soar above right 